Hey guys, this is Dave with Audio In. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Sea Audio Tangzu Shimin Li Encounter Edition. This is a collaboration, but this is kind of an unusual type of collaboration because it's between two different brands instead of a brand working directly with a reviewer. This does fall into the budget category at $49 and it's a single dynamic driver IEM, but there's been kind of a re recurring theme throughout some of my more recent budget IEM reviews and unfortunately I've got to talk about it one more time. But before we do, I quickly want to mention the 328 sale that's going on over at Hi-Fi Go right now because sales like this only come along every so often throughout the year. And if you're new to the hobby and you're trying to build your collection, these are the sales you need to look out for. So again, this particular sale is going on at Hi-Fi Go right now, but it's going through March 26th. So you need to jump on this as soon as possible if you don't want to miss out on these deals. So just click on the link in the description and it'll take you right to it. But let's quickly go over what's included in the package with the Shimin Lee Encounter Edition. We have the IEMs, of course. They also include a cable, a soft case, and a very good assortment of tips. Also includes a cleaning cloth. As for the design and specifications, as I mentioned before, this has a single 10 millimeter dynamic driver configuration and the driver is housed in this aluminum shell, which if you look close is uncharacteristically well made and designed for this price point. The red color is very beautiful in my opinion. And from what I understand, it's actually not a painted on, it's actually a coating that's baked on, which is supposed to help to minimize the likelihood of it chipping and just increase its durability. For this price range, this is probably one of the better built and designed IEMs that I've come across. It's also very comfortable. I had no problem getting a good seal with the included large tips. It also provides pretty good isolation as well. And as for the cable, it's a two pin 3.5 millimeter terminated cable. Feels pretty nice. I haven't had too many issues with it tangling. It's not super soft, but it is soft enough. And the two pin connector feels nice and secure. So when it comes to build quality design and accessories, I feel like they've put a pretty solid package together for the $50 price range. So in the intro, I had mentioned that there was a recurring theme that's kind of been popping up in some of my more recent budget IEM reviews. And what that is, is tuning with overly forward upper mids to be more specific around 2K to 2.5K. And I think it all started with the, the Chew, the Moondrop Chew. Then it was the Kima, then the T4 Plus, the Mech Warrior, um, the, the Moondrop Lawn, and then I believe the most recent was the C5. And there was also the Oranos, but the Oranos mids are a little more tamed in my opinion. And the overall tuning is actually pretty good at this price point. It's probably one of my favorite budget IEMs right now. But in regards to the Shimon Lee, it seems with this particular collaboration, they chose to take a similar tuning approach. However, there are some small redeeming qualities that I feel kind of help set this pair apart from some of the competition. So the overall tuning of the Shimon Lee, like the other IEMs I, I've reviewed recently, is very mid forward. And unfortunately, what that does is it results in some imbalance in my opinion. However, the base levels and base tuning does help to offset the upper mids a little. It still falls short in my opinion, but it does help. And that goes for the treble as well. And actually the quantity and the tuning of the treble plays an even, an even bigger role in helping to kind of offset and even 
give a more natural presentation to the overall tuning. But going back to the bass and kind of breaking things down just a little bit further, if you were to isolate the bass on its own, the bass is actually quite good because it has really good impact and slam. And while there is maybe some loss of mid bass and lower mid detail, the small amount of added warmth in that lower mid and mid bass area helps to balance out those upper mids a little. And it also helps to give instruments and vocals a little needed note weight. But again, at the same time, you are sacrificing some of that mid bass and lower mid texture and detail. And now we've already addressed the, the mids a little bit, and we know that those forward upper mids can push vocals and some instruments a little too far forward, causing it to sound shouty and eventually can become fatiguing. And that's not, it's not that the vocals sound bad. They actually sound pretty clean and even natural in my opinion. It's just they have more energy and presence than I prefer. And as for mid-range detail retrieval, while the lower mids again have some of that detail loss, a lot of that is restored in the upper mids. And that's also the case with the treble as well. And this is Again, one of those redeeming qualities that I referred to earlier because the treble is tuned very well in my opinion. And if you look at the graph, you can see that there's plenty of upper treble presence past 10K, which really helps with that perceived detail, but also adds sparkle and air if it's present in the recording. And if you look at the treble as a whole, you'll see those peaks around 8K, uh, 12K, 16K, and then I think there's a small one around 18K or so. And basically what that can do is give a little extra energy and detail, not only to instruments like violins and some of those higher stringed instruments, but also to the attack on some percussion instruments and also cymbals. And that added energy and presence in the treble also helps to balance out those upper mids a little. So while the upper mids, again, they might be a little too forward on their own, when combined with the extra treble presence, the top half of the tuning actually sounds quite natural and, and pretty good overall, which brings us to technicalities. So we talked about those treble peaks and that upper treble presence. In addition to helping balance out the upper mids, it also helps to open up the soundstage a little more. And with, again, that added air above 10K, those work together really well to kind of help immerse the listener into the music just a little bit more. Now, as for imaging and layering, it's actually pretty good at this price. And what I mean by that is while the center imaging is very good, so that would be any vocal or instrument that's placed front and center in the mix, the rest of the instruments that are further away or maybe pan to the right or to the left are a little less focused or, or anchored in the sound field. And sometimes they can sound like they're just a little bit floaty again and out of focus. But when you're taking price into consideration, the overall technicalities are still pretty good. So just to kind of summarize everything. Now, actually I did want to do, my goal was to do some more detailed comparisons with some of those other budget IEMs that had that same mid forward tuning. But honestly, I've run out of time. But I will say that of the budget IEMs that I, again, have re reviewed recently, this is probably not one of my favorites as far as its tuning. However, I'm still going to give this a recommendation, but with a caveat, because there will be those of you out there that this type of tuning may appeal to. And while the tuning is more forward than I prefer, it's got really good technicalities, especially for its price. And... It's exceptionally well built and designed. But that caveat is this. If you're the type that finds yourself easily fatigued and having to turn the volume down because your ears just can't take it, or maybe again, those vocals are too loud or that, that center instrument is, is too forward, then this probably isn't the IEM for you. But if you like that, if you like a very forward vocal, and again, the vocals do sound good. Those instruments do sound good. 
and so if you like that, then this actually might work for you because the Shimon Lee does everything else quite well for its price. And what I mean by that, everything else, is that again, if you look at how the bass and treble are tuned in isolation, it's done again really well. It's just those <laughs> darn upper mids. And again, it has very good technicalities for the price. So that's why I still give this my recommendation, but with a caveat. So that concludes my review of the Shiman Lee Encounter Edition. Don't forget, if you're wanting to, again, if you're wanting to start building your collection, if you're just getting started out in this hobby and you want to take advantage some, of some really good deals right now, don't forget to click on the link in the description and go check out the 328 cell on hifigo.com. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you like my content, please take a second, hit that subscribe button. Also, if you would please like this video, please share this video. I hope you guys have an awesome day.